Well, good day. We uh, finished up the pine service counter. Um, it's been a few days since I posted a video, still letting the arm heal. I'm going to probably install that counter this weekend, take you along with that. But I wanted to do an introduction um, to the next, I don't know, series, parts of things that we're going to be doing in the shop. And that's going to be the introduction to inlays. Inlays commonly and frequently scare the living crap out of a lot of woodworkers, whether the hobbyist, semi-professional, um, whoever. But like most things, I have found that the best way to learn to do inlays is just by doing inlays. So don't be scared. Don't splurge on maybe the most exotic woods you can find to do your inlays. But don't be afraid to try it out either. The concept is real simple. You're taking a shape of one object and you're inlaying it into another object. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to take the shape, no matter what it is, and you're going to hollow out through the wood the object that you want it to fit. It's like a mortise and tenon. You cut a mortise out to fit a tenon. You're going to do the same thing, but not as deep, not all the way through. But you're going to cut out a mortise for your inlay. But Today we're going to talk about the things that I use to do inlays. There's lots of ways to do it, lots of theories, a lot of people that have a real matter of fact. But this is what I do. This is what I have found. This is off of experience of all the inlays that I've done, what works best for me. Alright, before we can even really talk about tools, uh, bits, things that you need for an inlay, probably more importantly is the wood. Um, there's some do's and don'ts, and right in front of you would be a don't. We've got two types of wood. Say, like I just wanted to do an inlay of this square stock into this pine board. Well, this is Purple Heart. And purple Heart isn't the hardest wood known to man, but it is pretty stinking hard. Pine, not the softest wood known to man, but definitely very soft. Now, there's a problem with inlaying an extremely hard wood into an extremely soft wood. And that comes to the finishing process. Now say that we did inlay this, um, for example, into the pine, this purple heart into the pine. Um, normally you would have a little bit of this proud of the surface. So meaning that if this was inlaid, you would still see a little bit of an edge there and that you would sand down with glue that would fill any craps or ga uh, gaps that you may have but the problem with that is is if you spent any amount of time sanding you would know that if I sanded this pine board by itself and I sanded this purple heart by itself uh, I would have a very good result but if this purple heart was attached to this uh, pine well, when I went to go sand it, the pine would sand away at a much higher speed than the Purple Heart because it's harder, it's denser. So it's very important to pick what kind of woods you want to use for an inlay. Now say like I wanted to inlay that Purple Heart, let me grab a piece here, into some old walnut. Well, that would work good. The consistency, grain patterns, and more importantly, the density of walnut would be suitable for Purple Heart. Now, I don't think the color would necessarily uh, complement each other, but I do think it would be a good choice, and it would sand um, at a fairly even rate, producing a good inlay. All right, now for the type of bits for inlay. Usually when you do an inlay, you have a body that you're trying to um, carve out. For that, a bigger bit, this is a quarter inch, would be used to auger out probably 90% of the material. But more than likely, you're going to have some areas in your inlay that... Uh, are very hard to get into so there are several ways of getting into that area we'll talk about that when we get into the actual project but there's different bits 
Right here is the smallest inlay bit I have. That is a 1 64th spiral cut bit. Very good for detail. But the problem with this, you wouldn't want to do a whole piece with this size of bit. And if you hogged your router too much, more than likely you're going to bust that off. So you want to keep in mind on what size of bit is probably going to work best for you for the detailed work. I hardly ever use the 164th. I use the uh, 32nd quite a bit and the majority of the outer stuff or the inner inlay is done with the quarter inch. Now this bit here is what I used to use. Works well. The only problem with it is it has a concave shape. It has a cone. And what that what the problem with that is, is that the wood you're routing will have the same profile as that. So when you go inlay a square stock into something that has an angle to it, it's not going to work. Now as far as routers, I see a lot of these on forms, um, places that cater to inlays and that's a handheld router. I will never ever 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 use this type of router for inlays. A lot of companies market it for inlays router work. No, you're not having to have something that's three horses and has to have the power to auger through a lot of material but you want something that you can control and I have found through well, my experience that this is very hard to control it does have some weight to it but it is so small I can't control it what I use for all my inlays is a bigger router right here is a uh, Porter cable 4592 that's what I use it's big the vibration doesn't move it around and I'm able to control it with very good ease and very precise control when I'm doing my inlays. So that's a little bit about the types of tools, woods, and stuff that I begin to use for inlays.